Hello students, I hope that you are doing great today and today there are many important current affairs news uh, which was discussed or which came in today's newspaper that is September 13, okay, September 13, 2023. Some uh, news that is uh, we will be discussing in detail are like uh, regarding Nipah virus, okay, Nipah virus which uh, is uh, prevalent in news which uh, might be asked in your examination. So in this regard we will be discussing other uh, similar virus related sorry virus related diseases or uh, disease caused by bacteria then uh, what we say pro, uh, other causative agents okay there are a certain categorization we will be discussing that as well see uh, from examination point of view these things uh, matter very much so we will be discussing those aspects then comes the retail inflation con concept okay uh, there is a news regarding retail inflation okay we will be understanding what exactly it is retail inflation and uh, what are the data that is being provided by NSO right now or in the today's newspaper that is 13th September 2023 the Hindu newspaper so we will be analyzing the Hindu newspaper today okay so uh, this are uh, this two important news will be discussed other than that uh, Libya Libya is uh, facing a flash flood okay flash flood so that is also a very uh, major issue so uh, from geographical point of view we will be seeing the location of Libya and other details associated with Libya okay then there comes the Russia's fertilizer crisis okay we will be facing or we are uh, India as a country is uh, going to face a cri crisis from Russian side that is due to the certain aspects or uh, price related issue regarding Russia's fertilizer okay fertilizers we will be discussing about the uh, what we say trade relation and all which is relevant from your examination that is bank SSC and UPSC and other state PSC examinations okay so we'll be discussing the detail in this regard then uh, thereafter at the end I will be discussing some extra news which are uh, I what uh, the meaning is extra news is those those are those news which do uh, do not need a detailed discussion okay so you need to know they are important news so however there is no need to discuss it in detail so those extra news will be discussed other than that uh, what we say there is a first in India awards like uh, like Nobel Prize first Indian to win Nobel Prize a certain uh, awards have been discussed at the end of the video so you uh, keep watching till the end so that uh, you will benefit from this and then there are news regarding banking awareness as well in the video so we'll be discussing each and every aspect very thoroughly now I will like to tell you that uh, you need to enjoy the current affairs video I will be making it as enjoyable as possible and uh, if you are not enjoying current affairs then my friend you will not be able to study this students you need to enjoy what you study if you are not enjoying okay if you are not enjoying what you are studying that means you are getting bored and you are interest in that will dip over the time okay if it dips that means you will be bad at that concept if you are uh, not interested in current affairs that means your scores in current affairs will also decrease if you are interested in current affairs it eventually will lead to your increase in score so I will make it interesting as interesting as possible now it's your turn that you follow this initiative regularly also I would like to tell you we will be providing the PDFs okay the PDF for the current affairs as well but uh, today's current affairs uh, we will be uploading or comment we will be pinning it in comment section okay you can uh, what we say we will be uh, providing it in comment session section okay uh, you can download it from our telegram channel okay telegram channel we will be providing the link in the comment session so uh, you have to uh, download it from uh, our telegram channel so you can check the telegram channel as well uh, Resolute Academy okay now uh, uh, the link is provided in the comment session uh, section so you can click it and go to our telegram channel now let's move to the first current affairs of the day it is regarding Nipah virus okay Nipah virus is in news all uh, all of you know that Nipah virus breaks out again in Kerala and claims two lives see Nipah virus is a very dangerous uh, virus because its uh, mortality rate or the fatality rate is very high that is 40 percent to 75 percent in some cases it uh, some areas it is 100 percent so 40 to 75 percent is uh, 40 to 75 percent is normal its fatality rate so it is very dangerous and uh, since it is in news you might be asked certain questions regarding the same so we need to know certain details that is it is a zoonotic virus what is a zoonotic virus it is a virus which is transmitted from animals to humans okay like from uh, swine flu uh, from pig to 
humans. So, in uh, such viruses are called zoonotic virus and its first outbreak was in Malaysia and Singapore that is in 1998 and 1999 okay these are the places where it first broke out or the first reported cases were found now next is it appeared in domestic pigs and has been found among several species like what dogs cats goats horses and sheep however uh, in Kerala it has been spread through fruit bats okay the virus uh, is present in uh, bats urine and it's potentially even in its faces and uh, what we say saliva and birth fluids okay so uh, this is how it is transmitted you have to remember now what might be the question in examination is uh, what kind of uh, uh, a causative agent it is so that is zoonotic virus it is a uh, caused by zoonotic virus so that is our answer so it is caused by what zoonotic virus and the fatality rate as i already told you 40 to 75 percent that means it is very much very much dangerous my friend it is very 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 dangerous so you have to understand you have to study see uh, right now there is no uh, such treatment for it uh, they are uh, kept in observation and all and certain normal uh, medicines are provided okay normal medicines are provided and uh, uh, what we say standard operating procedure procedures are not yet been established by world health organization as well okay so that is all about this and then uh, we will be discussing about this world sepsis day okay Le world sepsis day it is a very important because it is associated with disease and as i told you important disease and uh, which are uh, important for upcoming exams will be discussed okay so first uh, we have to know uh, 13 september is considered as world sepsis day so it is a serious health condition okay caused by what viral bacterial and fungal infections okay it is a fun uh, infection okay now in the body and it can affect people of any age now the infections are uh, for example uti that is urinary tra uh, urinary tract infection then lung infection skin infection git infection that can lead to sepsis okay now the world's uh, sepsis day uh, was established by whom global sepsis alliance in 2012 that is very important now let's see certain diseases okay like uh, bacterial disease viral disease protozoal disease then fungal disease so bacterial disease there are few bacterial diseases like uh, diphtheria cholera leprosy then pneumonia tetanus typhoid tuberculosis these are bacterial diseases which is it is very important from examination point of view ssc say for ssc upsc they might ask this question which of the following are caused by bacterial bacterial virus or bacterial uh, sorry not virus bacteria which of the following are bacterial disease and which of the following are viral disease or they might give you the uh, what we say uh, one of the following okay they may provide you the name the typhoid typhoid is caused by bacteria virus protozoal or fungal fungal disease okay they might ask a question like that so but you have to be prepared for that okay now uh, viral diseases are chicken pox smallpox common cold aids aids is a viral disease okay acquired immunodeficiency syndrome okay then measles mumps then rabies dengue fever then protozoal diseases are malaria amoebic dysentery sleeping sickness and kalazar okay then fungal disease fungal disease is a ringworm uh, then athletic foot uh, candidiasis okay yeast infection and aspergillosis uh, cryptococcus then histoplasmosis okay these are the fungal diseases then certain names are very uh, funny you can say uh, they are complicated to pronounce however you have to remember this entirely because in examination you will be provided options and you have to just mark and remember the things okay now these are the fungal diseases you have to remember the entire thing because it is relevant as i told you from ssc and upsc exam point of view you have to study that very well okay next is uh, the concept it is uh, from economics okay economics now what is this retail inflation retail inflation so we will uh, the first question is what is it okay what is retail inflation now the answer is simple retail inflation uh, what we say retail inflation is basically known as cpi that is consumer price index inflation okay consumer price inflection uh, sorry in index inflation now uh, what exactly it is that is consumer price uh, index inflation means it is the rate okay it is the rate at which the price of goods and services okay at the uh, it is a rate that of uh, what we say the rise of sorry rate at which the price of goods and services that a consumer that a consumer that is you and me who buys uh, goods at a retail shop okay that is a consumer who uh, buys for personal use okay personal use like uh, uh, 
uh, it may include what pers if uh, we have to speak about personal use it means that vegetables can be included then uh, what we say uh, our daily uh, for example vegetables then uh, food okay vegetable food products and then clothing can be included okay clothing then housing if you are paying paying rent and so on uh, then transportation you travel a lot then transportation is also included then you might fall sick so medical expenses also included in this basket it is like a basket okay it is a basket and in which this all commodities or this all uh, sec uh, sections will be included and the rate is calculated okay now that is what we call it as consumer price index that is whatever consumer consumes its price and the movement of price accordingly and the inflation uh, the calculation will be done based on this products okay that is what we call it as uh, consumer price index or retail inflation okay retail inflation okay so uh, if you have to remember it in a simple terms uh, whatever you buy in retail okay retail is called retail inflation retail inflation means uh, the price rise general price rise general price rise okay that is uh, what we say inflation okay of goods and services that means uh, inflation okay you might be uh, seeing the rise of the uh, prices of uh, vegetables then clothes then transportation cost goes up all this uh, when we see it is called uh, general price rise and that is termed as inflation okay now there are uh, certain types of uh, inflation okay which is very much uh, sorry uh, not inflation certain types of what certain types of uh, consumer price index cpi okay types of cpi we will see it uh, okay consumer price index for industrial workers then comes consumer price index for agriculture workers then is uh, for rural workers consumer price index for rural workers and uh, urban non manual employees okay so these are the four categorization of cpi they are used to, for calculating what uh, inflation okay retail inflation now the first three are compiled by this first three okay this first three that is industrial worker agriculture worker and rural worker it is compiled by whom it is compiled by uh, labor bureau okay labor bureau which is under the ministry of labor and employment okay these three are compiled by them and the fourth is compiled by what nso national statistical organization okay uh, sorry uh, national statistical office okay that they are the people who compile the uh, last one that is for urban non manual employees okay now these are the data and uh, uh, what we say the cpi uh, is which is used i mean uh, the cpi that is uh, um, cpi's data is used by a certain organization to understand or the, to analyze the inflation and that organization is monetary policy committee okay monetary policy committee monitors the cpi data okay so as to decide or to act upon the inflation rate okay that is a very sorry inflation rate inflation rate of uh, uh, india the present country uh, in entirely okay so monetary policy decides upon the how to control inflation and uh, that data or what the data that they use is cpi okay that is consumer price index okay now uh, it was adopted in 2014 okay you can remember that it is uh, it was adopted in 2014 as a main indicator of inflation that is cpi was adopted in 2014 as a main indicator okay now base year for cpi that is base year for cpi is 2012 okay generally it is 2012 so it is very important you have to remember that as well okay now these are the general details regarding the uh, entire uh, thing and uh, now let's see some of the important uh, what we say data given in this article okay certain uh, important data given in this article first of all uh, they have said that the retail inflation declined okay it declined and it uh, reached at what 6.83 percent okay in august it is the data is uh, of august okay 6.83 in august compared to july it is as compared to previous month it has declined okay so inflation has declined which is a good sign you can see here in a month of july it was 7.4 and now it is 6.83 okay so that is uh, what the data in the article or the news report shows then there was another data that is food inflation okay inflation in the food set that is vegetables and uh, consuming uh, consumable or we can say packed foods or that are considered here and food in inflation also reduced okay to 9.94 percent in uh, what we say uh, august as compared to uh, what july okay previous month okay july 
and uh, uh, in July it was 11.51 percent. Okay, so there is a ease in that as well. Food inflation also went down, and uh, then there is also a positive news that is industrial output. Okay, industrial output, industrial output also increased. That is by 5.7 percent as compared to July. Okay, July that is uh, in July it was 3.8 percent, and uh, in August it is the growth rate is. 5.7 percent. So that is what the article speaks about. Okay, this article gives this information for us. Okay, now let's move to the next one. It is regarding the Libya. Okay, the Libya where uh, there was a flash flood. Uh, we have seen it. Okay, around 2,300 uh, may have been uh, missing as a flash flood hit Libya city. See, this is the uh, country Libya. Okay, it is in which uh, continent? It is in Africa. Okay, Africa. Now, which all countries are uh, surrounding it? That is, uh, Tunisia is there, Algeria is there, Nigeria is there, Niger is there, Chad is there, uh, Sudan and uh, Egypt. Okay, and there is a Mediterranean Sea in the north of uh, Libya, and the capital of Libya is Tripoli. Okay, now the capital, uh, as I told you, it is Tripoli. The currency is Libyan dinar. Then the continent we have discussed, uh, and uh, Abdul Hamid. Deba, he is the interim prime minister of Libya. Okay, he is the interim. That is temporary prime minister of in uh, of Libya. Okay, temporary prime minister of Libya. And uh, let's see about what exactly a flash flood means. Okay, there is a criteria to declare declare a flood. Uh, call is flash flood. Okay, so let's see. See if there is a sudden surge. Okay, sudden surge. Suddenly, uh, surge in what water level? Surge in water level. Okay, surge in water level. And uh, uh, do uh, in a very short span. We, okay, say for in six hours. Within six hours, there is a very much high surge in water level. Then in that case, it is considered as flash flood. Okay, flash flood. It may be caused due to heavy rain. Okay, very heavy rain or and with along with that uh, blockages of what drainage systems. Okay, drainage. So the uh, drainage. Okay, it will uh, cause what the rising level of water in the area. So that will be considered as flash flood. Okay, that is very much uh, what flash flood is about. Okay. Next news is Russia. Russian company set to cease offering discounts on fertilizer supplies to India. It is a very important news. See, uh, Russia is offering. Uh, used to offer what we say. Uh, discount or uh, very discounted price uh, to India uh, in uh, matters of that uh, DAP. That is, DAP is a dye ammonium phosphate fertilizer. Okay. Now, uh, uh, earlier India had to buy fertilizer at a higher cost. Okay. Fertilizer at higher cost. Okay. Fertilizer it fertilizer. Fertilizer at higher cost. And uh, then Russia, due to the Ukraine war and uh, every other country. What happened? They uh, putting sanction on Russia. They uh, saw India as a potential market and gave uh, fertilizers at a very subsidized or a discounted rate. And that's why India could uh, sustain the uh, what we say the onslaught of the price rise. Okay. Now what happens is uh, due to the more blockade and uh, other issues, Russian companies. Okay, Russian companies are saying that this uh, what we say discount. Okay, this discount which they offered. Is not sustainable, not sustainable, and uh, it is means a lot of loss for them or the companies of Russia. So they are withdrawing the discount, which implies that India will have to pay more. Okay, will India will have to pay more for the uh, fertilizers? Okay, here the data are given here the cost and all which uh, we provide. This cost is not relevant from examination point of view. So that so that is why I will not be discussing. However, there are certain facts which is important from our examination point of view. Let's see those facts. Okay, first of all, the if we speak about Russia, Russia is the what we say fifth largest trading partner. Okay, fifth largest trading partner of India. Fifth largest trading partner of India. That means uh, we need to know uh, who are the first, second, third, and fourth. Okay, first is as you know U.S. Then second is China, then third is UAE. Okay, UAE, and fourth is Saudi Arabia. Okay, Saudi. Saudi Arabia is the fourth country, and the fifth country is Russia. Uh, Russia was way uh, below. That is, it was around twentieth. Uh, okay. However, due to this uh, fertilizer uh, trade, in it rose in the rank to fifth this year. Okay. So that is very important. Now next data or uh, next. Fact that is relevant for your examination is uh, what we say 
Russia is the now the largest supplier of oil to India. Okay. Oil supply. India is getting oil from Russia at a very discounted or lesser rate from other uh, which we buy from compared to uh, we what we buy from other countries. Okay. So Russia is the top oil supplier to India. That is largest oil supplier to India. Who is the largest oil supplier to India? It is Russia. Okay. Now the question is uh, who are the second, third and fourth. Okay. Second is Iraq. Second is Iraq. Uh, then uh, Third is Saudi Arabia, then comes UAE, okay, this is the rank, it is regarding oil supply to India. Now next one is uh, Russia has become the India's largest fertilizer supplier, okay, earlier China was the largest fertilizer supplier, okay, China was largest, largest, uh, what we say, fertilizer supplier, now Russia is the, what we say, Russia is the largest supplier, okay, so if exam, in examination, a question appears, who is the largest fertilizer supplier of India? That means uh, Russia is the largest supplier and now second largest is China. So you have to remember that fact as well. And uh, at the last fact which is uh, relevant for uh, uh, our examination is Russia's fertilizer export to India increased. Okay. Because only because of the discount we spoke of. Okay. Earlier there was no discount. Others uh, the price was same. However, uh, due to this uh, Ukraine war. Indian market ha uh, needed the fertilizer. However, Russia was the only country which was ready to provide it at discounted rate. So that's why we got uh, it at a discounted rate and uh, what we say it was beneficial for India. Now the prices may rise in the coming months. Okay. Now the fertilizer imports from Russia was more than tripled to record 4.25 million tons in 2022-23 as compared to uh, previous year. Okay. So the discount was the primary reason for the uh, what we say the increase in trade okay or the import of fertilizers from Russia now let's move on to the next one uh, it is an advertisement by Haryana government see Haryana government is uh, frequently uh, providing advertisements and they are discussing about what uh, schemes of the government uh, so we have to study them see Pradhan Mantri Matru Vandana Yojana is uh, in the news as well so uh, two schemes are there first of all we will see this advertisement by Haryana government you know the Haryana government's uh, CM uh, is Manohar Lal Khattar, Manohar Lal Khattar and then the governor is uh, Dattatreya, okay, Bandaru Dattatreya, okay, that is uh, the governor of uh, what we say Haryana, okay, now uh, let's see uh, what they are providing, see, strengthening rights of women by ensuing 50% participation in panchayats, it's not relevant for examination, 33% ration deposit reserved for women, free education and transportation service for all girl students up to post graduation. It is a very important uh, initiative. Okay. Now, Betty Bachao, Betty Padao program. Okay. So, it has helped the gender ratio uh, to be improved. Okay. At now, uh, earlier it had 871. Now, it has 927. Okay. That is uh, the credit goes to Betty Bachao, Betty Padao program. Now, let's uh, see what exactly Betty Bachao, Betty Padao program uh, means okay it uh, actually it was launched in 2015 okay uh, in 2015 that is exactly exact date is uh, something like january okay one second january 22 okay i believe it is january 22 2015 when the prime minister prime minister of india launched this initiative that is betty bachao betty padao it is a very flagship uh, what we say program uh, to empower women and uh, to uh, end the uh, female feticide, okay, you might be aware of it, female feticide was very much prevalent in states like Haryana, okay. Now, it is a tri-ministerial effort, okay, uh, three ministers are include, uh, included, that is uh, Ministry of Women uh, and Child Development, then uh, Ministry of Health, okay, Health and Family Welfare, okay, and then Ministry of Education, see, uh, education comes because of uh, the Betty Padao uh, component, okay, and uh, then uh, the health aspect is also uh, taken care of in this initiative. So that's why we uh, speak about Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, and then uh, comes the Ministry of Women and Child Development. So obviously, it's uh, it focuses on girl child, and the uh, focus is child, okay. So Betty Bachao, Betty Padao comes under three ministers, that is ministries, that is Ministry of Women and Child Development, Ministry of uh, uh, health and family welfare that comes under Mansuk Mandvia, Mansuk Mandvia and uh, Ministry of Education is under Dharmendra Pradhan. Okay, these are the important aspects of uh, the new uh, Betty Bachao, Betty Padao uh, initiative. So here, what they do is basically they uh, uh, they fight against uh, gender biased sex selective elimination. Okay, that is I told female feticide. They uh, female 
feticide is uh, prohibited or they try to eliminate it okay then comes the survival and protection of girl child is also their focus okay see uh, after their birth they have to survive they need to get nutrition and so and so forth and they need to be protected okay they need to be protected so safety and such component is also there then uh, education is another education is another component in this uh, where where girls are supposed to be participating in education and participation of girl child in the social and educational field is also expected further uh, protecting girls child is the prominent or the major segment of this uh, initiative okay now another uh, few things about uh, this initiative if we have to speak uh, which is uh, relevant for the examination is uh, uh, in few initiatives are there gudda guddi boards okay gudda guddi boards you might uh, write it down gudda sorry guddi gudda uh, boards okay guddi gudda boards uh, now what is this board okay it is exactly a board uh, where it, which it would be placed in the panchayats okay panchayat building and all and in this board uh, they will be showing how many boys are born or uh, uh, boy child is born and how many girl child is born okay so the ratio will be shown so suppose that today two girl child have, uh, boy child have born then and one girl child have born it will be showing it now and then the total will be also be shown in the year way wise okay and then if uh, tomorrow say three boy child are born and four uh, girl child are born so we can actually what monitor how much uh, equality or the ratio is there so that will help uh, people to be aware that see girl child are very less so uh, prominence would be given to uh, promote girl child okay here that is the basic idea there then comes the another concept where they are uh, breaking the stereotypes okay stereotypes and all that uh, regarding the girl child you see girl child is a burden and such concepts are there okay so under beti bachao beti padhao uh, program such awareness is also provided okay now then comes the pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana okay now under this initiative uh, so if i have to speak this initiative is a very interesting one see uh, suppose a woman is working okay and uh, during her pregnancy she might lose the lose the job so uh, it is kind of a compensation or financial assistance given to women that is 6000 would be given to women okay in three installments okay so who are, what type of women are benefited from this is uh, pregnant and lactating women that is uh, feeding women will also be included okay uh, pregnant and lactating women are included uh, under this initiative okay 6000 rupees are provided and uh, this money is actually intended to be providing health and nutritional conditions okay they uh, to provide healthy okay uh, um, it means that uh, to uh, do regular checkups regular checkups are important then nutritious food is uh, coming under this that is this money needs to be spent under for nutritious food and health checkups okay that is the basic idea so that uh, women uh, may not be malnourished and if a malnourished uh, woman is giving birth to a child the child's growth may be hampered okay hampered so it is very much uh, important okay hampered and <laughs> it is very much important that uh, the nutrition is good okay nutrition provided to women is good that will ensure that the child's growth okay the child's growth while the woman is pregnant and after the child comes out uh, the child's uh, growth mental growth and physical growth is good okay that is why pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana focuses on okay now uh, this uh, the age group uh, uh, the, or the eligibility if you have to speak uh, this benefit is given to uh, girls above 19 years okay 19 years only if a girl gets pregnant uh, at 18 years she will not be receiving this benefit and also it is given on the first live birth okay first live birth not on second or third okay first live birth only okay that is the uh, initiative under this scheme okay now next is uh, we have to see if we see it is about sikkim government will restore old pension scheme now it is a lot of buzzes there uh, uh, earlier uh, himachal pradesh also uh, himachal pradesh okay himachal pradesh uh, there was an election in himachal pradesh when uh, sukvinder suku uh, the present cm was uh, elected okay Sukhvinder Suku, Suku. Okay, he was elected, and his election promise was he will be restoring old pension scheme. Okay, old pension scheme. Now it is very important, or it is very important to understand. Sorry, it is very important to understand what exactly is old pension scheme. Okay, pension scheme. What is 
ओल्ड पेंशन स्कीम ना ओल्ड पेंशन स्कीम इज अ लाइफ लॉन्ग इनकम ओके लाइफ लॉन्ग इनकम पोस्ट वॉट वी से रिटायरमेंट ओके लाइफ लॉन्ग इनकम लाइफ लॉन्ग इनकम आफ्टर वॉट रिटायरमेंट युअर रिटायरमेंट नाउ इफ पीपल माइट बी अवेयर ऑफ एक्सैक्टली दॉट कॉन्सेप्ट आर हिर but uh, i will discuss it in detail okay uh, basically if, uh, suppose you are uh, on the last month of the, your reti retirement that is the last month you are drawing 50000 rupees as your salary then you will be given a pension of uh, 25000 that is 50% of the last drawn salary and this amount will be increased or the benefits of revision of da will also be or uh, dearance allowance will be dr that is dearance uh, uh, relief will also be provided twice year year okay that was uh, what uh, was included in the old pension scheme however after 2004 this was four second or uh, since the government felt that the burden okay the burden of uh, old pension scheme is putting a great pressure on the states exchequer so they what they do, did was uh, what they did was uh, they forsook this uh, what we say uh, pension okay pension scheme old pension scheme and they brought new pension scheme okay new pension scheme where the employees need to contribute so that they can get a pension okay that was the idea now this uh, older one older version where you could get 50% of what the last drawn salary has been uh, restored in certain states so it is very much important so you have to understand that that uh, old pension scheme was uh, switched off or uh, turned down in 2004 and now uh, states like sikkim himachal pradesh has brought it sikkim is uh, going to bring it uh, certain so certain states are uh, already coming forth to implement this thing okay now next one is now next one is up approves formation of industrial city in bundelkhand okay up has approved uh, the formation of uh, bundelkhand uh, city as a industrial city okay now uh, the uh, thing is actually uh, this was declared in september 12 okay september 12 okay now bundelkhand uh, sorry bida has decided it okay bida means uh, bundelkhand industrial development authority okay they have Uh, approved the formation of uh, industrial city in bundelkhand okay uh, it will be similar to what noida noida is in uh, what up however it also uh, comes under N uh, ncr as well okay so noida it uh, uh, noida was made an industrial city in 1976 now uh, bundelkhand will also be made one such a city okay now bundelkhand will be connected with a expressway the act expressway or the national highway Uh, will be nh uh, 27 that might be relevant from examination point of view you might be asked in the examination so you have to remember this detail okay now if you speak about up okay if you speak about up you know that uh, the lucknow is the capital okay lucknow is the capital and who is the chief minister it is yogi adityanath yogi adityanath and uh, anandi ben patel anandi ben patel is the governor anandi ben patel is the governor okay so it is very relevant from examination point of view these are the details okay now also some uh, important thing is it has 75 districts recently they added few districts and now the total is 75 districts so you have to remember that up has 75 districts as well okay now let's move to the next one uh, that is uh, iccr okay iccr to, uh, will be holding what a festival of democracy on september 15 okay september 15 they will be holding a Uh, festival of democracy okay now the full form of iccr is relevant from examination point of view it is indian indian council indian council for cultural indian council for cultural relations okay it is indian council for cultural relations that is iccr it is very important from examination point of view and other details that are relevant from exam is uh, it will be held in nalanda university nalanda university uh, that is in rajgir okay rajgir in bihar bihar okay bihar in the state of bihar uh, nalanda university in rajgir in the state of bihar it will be held there okay now it will be uh, uh, what we say it is a part of iccrs iccrs that is indian council for cultural relations uh, what we say international days uh, of democracy celebration okay international day of democracy democracy celebration it is a part of that okay now um, what we say it also falls in line with bharat mother of democracy okay 
there was an exhibition Bharat Mother of Democracy organized by Union Cultural Minister. We already discussed about it. It is, it was, it is, uh, um, sorry, the Union Cultural Minister is G. Kishan Reddy. Okay, G. Kishan Reddy. Okay, so it is also important and uh, this ministry has uh, uh, conducted an exhibition that is Bharat Mother of All, uh, Mother of Democracy in Bharat Mandap. Bharat Mandap is in Delhi, okay, where the G20 Leaders Summit was held recently, okay. G20 Summit was held recently, okay. So, the, it was inaugurated by whom? It was, Bharat Mandap was inaugurated by PM Narendra Modi also. It, this is also an important fact, okay. Now, uh, this is all, these are the in, uh, important information regarding this news, okay. Let's move to the next one. Now, uh, there is a willingness that we see from South Korea to join Quad. Okay, Quad is a uh, organization or a body uh, of four countries that is India, uh, Australia, USA and Japan. Okay, this is the Quad. Okay, you can see it is something like a quadrilateral. Okay, Quad. Now, what is exactly Quad stands for? Quad stands for Quadrilateral Security Dialogue. Quadrilateral, sorry, Quadrilateral, Quadrilateral, oh, one second, not uh, this, okay, Quadrilateral Security Dialogue. Okay, Quadrilateral Security Dialogue uh, is what Quad stands for. Quad stands for what? Quadrilateral Security Dialogue. So, you have to remember this and uh, it has four countries as already we have uh, spoken about it. That is India, then Australia, then uh, USA and then Japan. AU, uh, sorry, A I A U J. So, recently, lately, uh, many other countries have shown interest to join Quad. Okay. So, uh, maybe uh, in future we might see few new additional members as well. Okay. Now, if we have to speak about uh, Quad, it is uh, basically a grouping of four countries and uh, Basically, the common interest that is a free, open, prosperous, Pacific, Indo-Pacific region. Okay, they want, it is focusing this region, Indo-Pacific region. Okay, they are focusing on this particular region. See, China has an interference or influence over this region. And if China happens to dominate this region, then the problem would be the trade that uh, goes through this region from India, USA, Japan, Australia will all be hampered and disturbed. Okay, so that's why uh, to keep the trade uh, operations free in this region that's why this quad was formed okay so more and more countries are uh, uh, willing to join it and this idea of quad okay this idea of quad was flouted or the, uh, put forth by japanese prime minister then japanese prime minister that is shinzo abe shinzo abe you might be knowing that he was assassinated recently shinzo Abe, okay shinzo abe in 2007 okay it was put forth uh, ahead in uh, 2007 and in 2017 okay in 2017 this quad came to be formed okay through india australia us and japan uh, coming together okay then it was formed in 2017 so the idea was uh, formulated in 2007 and it exactly came into being in 2017 so you have to remember that aspect also now other than that there is another term which is uh, being discussed in this article that is comprehensive economic partnership agreement cepa so we have to understand or we have to see what exactly that uh, agreement or that uh, thing means okay so let's see what it is it is actually a free trade agreement okay it is a kind of free trade agreement between the uh, signing uh, countries okay that covers the negotiations of trade and service and investments and other areas of economic partnership okay so see uh, certain uh, goods will be included then certain services will be included then certain kind of investment will be uh, included and negotiation will be done that okay so and so tariff or the tax rate will be fixed and uh, it will be way lower than other countries so that uh, a or a very profitable trade relation can be maintained between the two countries that is a and b might be entering into capa okay cepa agreement and they will be providing a tax regime which is very friendly and very which will boost what we say the trade between the two countries that is the basic idea of cepa it is the full form is what uh, you can see here comprehensive economic partnership agreement okay that is the full form now since we have spoken about south korea we need to know who is the uh, c uh, sorry prime minister of South Korea, it is Han Duk, Han Duk Su, Han Duk Su, Han Duk Su, okay, and the capital is Seoul, okay, Seoul is the capital, and currency, you might be aware, South Korean won, South Korean won is the capital, you, if you have, uh, if you have been watching uh, South Korean uh, series, okay, K-drama and all, you might be seeing uh, the transactions are done in won, okay, so it will be 
how you you can remember like that as well okay now uh, that's all in this news uh, now we will uh, move to the next one okay india's defense minister that is uh, rajnath singh lays foundation stone for nyoma airfield near lac lac is line of actual control in eastern ladakh region okay now this would be the uh, one of the highest see the altitude is 13700 see so it is the world's highest uh, altitude base for uh, fighter jets okay to be land it will be built at the cost of what around 214 it is said however uh, they are saying around uh, 219 might also be the cost but approximate estimation is about 200 crore so uh, the final estimation will come uh, someday uh, closer okay here they have provided a approx estimation of 200 crores but uh, certain news channel news uh, uh, articles have provided the detail about 219 some have said 214 as you can see here 214 okay and the time duration would be two years it will take around two years and the length of the uh, what we say this uh, airfield would be 2.7 kilometers the site's uh, area which is not relevant you need not to study it 1235 acres would be included okay now other than this uh, their uh, bro that is a border road organization uh, have also uh, he inaugurated certain 90 projects which will be built by whom border road organization and the cost is 2900 crores okay 2900 crores so that is also relevant from this uh, what we say news okay so that's it that is the uh, major news so uh, you must be knowing that uh, our defense minister is Rajnath Singh. Okay, defense minister is Rajnath Singh. Is, it is very much important. Okay, now next one is uh, Ayushman Bhava Health. Okay, Ayushman Bhava Health uh, campaign. It is it is being uh, launched by Draupadi Murmu. It will be launched by Draupadi Murmu virtually. Okay, virtually virtual launch was declared and it will be launched today. That is on 13 September 2023. Okay virtually it was uh, launched virtually and uh, the ayushman bhava campaign is basically to ensure comprehensive saturation coverage of health schemes leaving no eligible beneficials out without uh, access to vital health care so it is a grassroots initiative to make uh, health benefits or whatever health schemes are provided by the government it should reach to the village level as well okay so that is even to the remotest of the village so that is the aim of this ayushman bhava uh, campaign that is basically a outreach program or uh, awareness uh, program okay now uh, this uh, initiative that is this campaign was launched by whom ministry of uh, uh, health and family welfare okay family welfare so it comes under mansuk mandviya okay mansuk mandviya is the uh, minister in charge of ministry of health and family welfare mansuk mandviya okay mandviya okay so this is the person in charge for ministry of health and family welfare and uh, also uh, we need to know that uh, under ayushman bhava okay ayushman bhava uh, there are four uh, what we say category four activities that have been planned under this program first is ayushman aapke dwar okay ayushman aapke dwar dwar okay 3.0 under this the uh, health schemes and uh, sorry under this uh, the health schemes will be provided and ensured that it reaches to all the people that is uh, to door to door service or uh, making aware uh, people about the scheme or the uh, Ayushman Bhava campaign and they go will go to the doors of the what we say people and uh, and make them aware of this initiative then comes the Ayushman Sabha Ayushman Sabha that is Ayushman Sabha it is actually a village level you know Sabhas are conducted in village and in this uh, Sabhas they will be providing information about the benefits of the central government uh, central government and state government's health uh, schemes and intended recip uh, recipients that is the uh, eligible people will be told they will be going to the village and uh, calling on sabhas and in that they will tell the uh, people that there are so and so central and state health uh, schemes which will be benefiting so and so category of the people so such people can go and avail this benefits and they will also be uh, informing them about how to avail this benefit as well next is ayushman mela ayushman mela Okay, Ayushman Mela is a simply uh, what we say. It will be conducted at Ayushman Bharat Health and Wellness uh, Health Health and Wellness Centers. Ayushman Bharat Health and Wellness Centers, and uh, it will be uh, organizing medical camps and uh, facilitating early diagnosis through screening. Okay, those are the festival uh, facilities uh, provided under Ayushman Mela. Then comes Ayushman Gram. Okay, Ayushman Gram. 
okay that is a very important thing okay here 100 uh, percent its aim is to provide 100 percent okay 100 percent coverage of Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana okay Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana's uh, benefit to uh, what we say the people holding this Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya card to uh, provide the benefit of health or uh, the benefit of what we say uh, health insurance or all the concept who come under what do you say PMJ PMJ that is uh, Pradhan Mantri uh, Jan Arogya Yojana then uh, Abha ID Abha ID Abha ID okay generation then immunization then screening non of non communicable diseases like uh, diabetes and all that so uh, they will be providing they will be covering all them and uh, providing them what uh, if a village or if a gram panchayat uh, covers th this entire thing okay then they will be certified or they will be titled as Ayushman gram okay Ayushman gram they will be receiving a title that is Ayushman gram which means that they have covered people under all these initiatives okay that is what it entails okay now that is uh, about the initiative now let's move to the next one it is related to banking awareness the students who are not uh, studying bank uh, exams so they uh, can skip this part because it is only important for bank students or those people preparing for bank exams okay SSC, UPSC uh, people or uh, P state PSC uh, students need not to watch this section okay they can skip on okay now first uh, news is IB, IOB that is Indian Overseas Bank unveils online uh, what we say allotment of safe deposit lockers facility okay now it is available to what uh, customers and non customers as well okay they uh, if you are a customer of in, uh, Indian Overseas Bank then also you can avail it and if you are non customer of uh, Indian Overseas Bank then also you can avail this benefit now what you have to do is you have to log in to www dot what www dot iob dot in okay in this portal and you can avail the real time in real time you can book a locker there okay you can book a locker there and your access will be provided it might take mostly they are saying that in, in within two minutes uh, you will be able to uh, what we say book a locker for yourself okay now then uh, if once you are allotted you will be provided with an email and uh, uh, what we say sms confirmation okay that is the uh, entire thing uh, that they are offering okay now this is very interesting initiative so that uh, people uh, don't have to go to the bank and wait for their lock locker allotment and all it will be super fast they will be using kyc to uh, allot you the what we say uh, the lockers okay now if you are speak out, uh, speaking about indian overseas bank then the ceo is ajay kumar srivastava and the headquarter is chennai the founder of this uh, bank which is not very much relevant is chidambaram chettiar and the it was founded in 1937 okay now let's move to the next one uh, next one is regarding bank of baroda's offers loan under festive campaign okay now uh, the campaign name or their campaign name is very important that is bob uh, here it is provided that bob k, k sang tyohar ki umang okay it is very important it is a bank product and uh, you have to study that is BOBK Sang uh, Tyohar Ki Umang okay BOBK Sang Tyohar Ki Umang okay uh, that is what it is and uh, you have to remember this now let's see what exactly this product uh, will offer you it will it is offering what home loan car loan education loan at a very competitive rates and it will be active till 31st December that is deadline is what is the deadline it is 31st December okay 31st December is the deadline okay that is uh, what it is about okay it will be providing what home car loan and education loan at a competitive rate okay now if we have to speak about uh, BOB BOB is headquarter is in Vadodara Vadodara that is in Gujarat okay Vadodara is in Gujarat okay now uh, headquarter is in uh, Vadodara then uh, it was founded on 20th July 20th July 1908 in Vadodara itself and the MD CEO, MD CEO, MD CEO is uh, Deva Datta, okay, Deva Datta, Deva Datta Chand, okay, he is the MD CEO and he replaced Sanjeev Chadda, he replaced Sanjeev Chadda, okay, it, uh, he has, uh, uh, what we say, replaced him recently, so we have to uh, remember it, uh, from examination point of view, you might be asked this question, so remember this fact as well, okay. Now let's move to the sports section. Here, uh, ITIA bans Halep. Okay, Simona Halep uh, for four years for doping violation. Okay, now she has appealed further as well, and she uh, is saying that she has not done it. However, uh, International Tennis Integrity Agency, that is ITIA, has uh, 
banned her for four years. Okay, in case her appeal is sustained, then this ban might be lifted. However, till then this ban will be prevalent. Now, from examination point of view, we need to know what is the full form of ITIA. It is International Tennis Integrity Agency and uh, also we need to know uh, uh, who is Simona Help. She is a professional tennis player and she has won two Grand Slams. Two Grand Slams. Okay. Two Grand Slams. She has won two Grand Slams. Okay. Now, we, yesterday we also saw that uh, Novak Djokovic became uh, the first player to win 24 Grand Slams. Okay. Or big titles. Okay. Grand Slam. Okay. 24 Grand, uh, Grand Slam were won by, by whom? Novak, Novak Djokovic. Okay. So, it is also important. Now, let's move to the next one. See, it is a very important news that is uh, Buddha circuit. Buddha circuit, you might be aware, it is in uh, Delhi. Okay. Buddha circuit uh, will be hosting what? MotoGP Bharat. Okay. MotoGP Bharat within 10 days. Okay. Now, it is uh, located in Greater Noida in Uttar Pradesh or uh, however it can be considered as uh, around New Delhi as well. Okay. Now, uh, associated with certain uh, inform important information, which is uh, what we say relevant for your exam is uh, YCOM 18. YCOM, YCOM 18. Okay. YCOM 18 has the exclusive uh, streaming rights of the championship. Okay. YCOM 18 has the exclusive uh, streaming rights of the championship and uh, Sports 18. Sports, uh, what we say, uh, Sports 18 TV uh, is the place where you can watch it and then uh, Geo app is also uh, associated with Geo Cinema, okay. Geo Cinema app is also associated with this thing, okay. Now, Buddha Circuit's uh, length, if you have to speak, it is 5 kilometers, okay. 5 kilometers long and 12 meters, what we say, 12 meters width, okay. 12 meters width and the length is 5 kilometer that you have to remember. Okay, now uh, let's see some uh, awards. It is uh, not uh, the recent award, however, uh, these are the static portion which might be appearing in your examination. So, you must know this. First Indian award is for international awards. Okay. Now, the first Indian to be awarded the Nobel Prize. You all know that it is Rabindranath Tagore in 1913. And the first Indian to be featured as a person of year by the Times Magazine. It is uh, in 1930, Mahatma Gandhi. First Indian to be awarded the UNESCO's Kalinga Prize. It is Jagjit Singh, 1963. And the first Indian to receive Booker Prize, a uh, British, uh, British citizen, Salman Rashid, okay. And the first Indian woman and also a first Indian citizen to receive Booker Prize is Arundhati Roy. Then, first Indian to receive the Pulitzer Prize for reporting category is Gobinda Pehari Lal. Then, the first Indian receipt of International Cricket Council, Sir uh, Greyfield Sobers Trophy, it is Rahul Dravid. And the first Indian scientist to be awarded the Nobel Prize, it was C.V. Raman. Okay, C.V. Ram, Raman and uh, in 1930. The first Indian to be awarded the Nish, uh, Nishane Pakistan, that is Morarjit Desai. Then comes the first Indian to be awarded the Magasese Award, that is Vinobe, Vinoba Vave. Then, first, award to, uh, first Indian to be awarded the Bangladesh uh, Swadhinath Sammana, it is Indira Gandhi. Then, first Indian and Indian organization to be awarded the Rights, Right Livelihood Award, that is Ella Bhatt of Seva, okay, Self-Employed Women's Association in 1984. And the first recipient of World Food uh, Prize instituted by Norman Brawl is M.S. Swaminathan in 1987, okay. And the first Asian recipient of Hoover Medal, uh, America's prestigious award for outstanding extra career service by engineers to humanity. It, is, it was received by APJ Abdul Kalam in 2008. The first Indian recipient of DSC Prize for South Asia's literature was Jeet Tail, okay, in 2013. And the first Indian recipient of Pritzker Prize, it is uh, considered as a Nobel Prize of for architecture was Bal Krishna Doshi in 2018. So, these are the uh, first international awards received by Indians, okay. Now, uh, sorry, not, uh, next is uh, some important news which uh, do not have to be discussed in details. These are extra news, okay. A veteran cartoonist uh, Ajit Ninan, uh, renowned in his series, Catus uh, sorry, center stage in India today and Nina's world in Times of India passed away in Mysore. Okay. So, uh, Ajit Nina was uh, what? He was a cartoonist. Okay. Now, the second phase of India and French naval uh, naval's bilateral exercise. Okay. Sorry. Uh, bilateral exercise. Varuna two, uh, 23. Okay. Varuna 23 took place in Arabian Sea. Okay. Now, next is uh, the exercise involved guide. Sorry. The exercise involved guided missile frigates. Uh, Tankers, maritime patrol and helicopters from both sides. Okay. Now, Puma India has roped Bollywood actor and entrepreneur Anushka Sharma 
as its new brand ambassador. The latest association of Anushka comes uh, as a part of Puma's ongoing commitment to women's business in India. Okay. Now, next is the Reserve Bank of India has decided to discontinue incremental cash reserve ratio ICRR in a phased manner. Then, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who uh, was a day-long visit to Indonesia, announced the establishment of emb embassy in Dili, Timor, let's stay. Okay. And the Indian Navy ship Sumedha arrived at the port of Alexandria, Egypt to participate in the exercise Bright Star 23. So, the uh, exercise Bright Star 23 will be held in I'll, uh, what to say, Egypt, okay, and around 34 countries will be participating. That is, it is a multinational tri service military exercise, okay. Tri service means three services that is, Air Force, uh, Army, and Navy, okay. These are the tri service, okay. This would be the multi, na uh, sorry, uh, multilateral, uh, sorry, multinational uh, tri service. Uh, what we say exercise now that's all we have uh, today's uh, in today's newspaper so we discussed the today's newspaper that is 13th 13th september's newspaper so uh, i hope that it was uh, beneficial for you and if you uh, found it useful do like the video and share it with the maximum number of people so that uh, they can also uh, avail the benefit of this initiative okay and uh, we will be winding up uh, for today so we will be meeting you in the next video till then take care and bye bye